find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, for Awesome Cast 282, where we get geeky talk tech and talk about awesome things with uh, awesome people in the Pittsburgh area uh, doing, you know, awesome techie things or awesome gaming things or whatever the case may be. We're going to be talking about a lot of that kind of stuff today. Uh, with me, I'm back on the show. So, so everybody, all my usual co hosts are sick or. or or they're at these fancy wine events or anything. So we've recast the entire show. Absolutely recast the entire awesome cast. And we're going to introduce to you uh, to you to them right now. John Carmen returns. He's my fellow podfather. I'm of, kind of a usual. You're, you're kind of I'm a usual. Semi-usual. Yeah, yeah. This is like your third time on the show. I'm making up. I told you I'm making up for that for... So we had you on like what episode? Yeah, you didn't three. tell me about like three hundred episodes. Yeah, yeah, there was like yeah, you you missed a lot there. Mm -hmm. But we're getting you back in the fold. We're making you a main part of this. Uh, but John Carmen of the former G Spot at Carmen Avenue on the tweeters. How you doing? I'm pretty good. Um, yeah, I'll just go with Carmen Avenue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And with the hey, there's somebody new on the couch. <laughs> Marta of uh, uh, Marta on the Move, a uh, great podcast here in Pittsburgh. Uh, I've been having fun listening to you talk to, talk to video gamers and, and, and brewers and all kinds of fun stuff there. You're a recent discovery for me, I got to be honest. So. <laughs> I don't mind being that, that's fine. But uh, uh, th real quick, tell people what your podcast is about. Um, so my podcast is interviewing interesting people and places in Pittsburgh and surrounding areas and out of Pittsburgh. Uh, it's a lot of travel, travel advice, food, drink, general nerdery, a lot of fun things. Anything fun to talk about, pretty much. It's a good time. I, my first, I actually, I think I was uh, officially introduced to you as a podcaster when I was switching for podcast day, and uh, and I was in the other room, but I got to observe. Uh, but, uh, but 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 uh, yeah, you're you're now in my podcast list. Ooh, so. yay! Thank you, thank uh, you for having me. And also with us, he's uh, with us, uh, uh, upcoming the Pittsburgh uh, Gaming, I'm sorry, Pittsburgh Retro Gaming happening this weekend. We'll talk about that more in a moment. Uh, James Dean of 8-Bit uh, Evolution joining us. How you doing, sir? I'm doing good. Uh, it's Deegan, though. But Deegan, I'm close. sorry. <laughs> That's the problem. That's my problem on the show. <laughs> uh, now you're in the fold that I've mispronounced your name. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me today. All right, we'll be touching base on what what you have going on, but of course, please everybody, please check out uh, awesomecast.net where you subscribe to this and check out past shows and check out the awesome chat interviews we've been having with a bunch of people doing awesome things around Pittsburgh in technology and social media and all around. Uh, and uh, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, on your Stitcher, Spreaker's, iHeartRadio's, YouTube. All the links are over there. And uh, again, check out past shows and let us know what you think of, uh, of, of news stories from the week, stuff we talk on, talked about on the show, stuff we got wrong. I got a lot of people correcting me on YouTube. Thank you. I don't know everything. Um, and, uh, and, and and even companies of cameras that that really want to talk to me about about their cameras that that I didn't entirely know what all was going on with them. That's cool too. Uh, but you can get a hold of us at AwesomeCast on the Twitter, uh, AwesomeCast at SorgatronMedia.com, and of course we have a great AwesomeCast uh, Facebook group that people are participating in. John's in there. John's in there participating. Thank I'm you. I'm in every Facebook group. Every Facebook. You're you not in my Facebook group yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're a new discovery. I, that I am. There you go. <laughs> there you it. go. Uh, so let's get. Oh wait. Oh, and we also have to thank our friends, our Patreons, our executive producers. Uh, first of all, uh, Thistle C Business Development, uh, as well as uh, 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 Mike Fedor of Mike at Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter, and of course at Thistle C for our other friends. We actually should be having uh, one of the two of them on in the coming weeks, so they're going to cash in. We call it on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, the Patreon in the Bank, um, and they're going to be on. Uh, to, to talk tech with us and have some fun uh you can uh, contribute to the show if you're finding value in it um over at patreon.com slash awesome cast like these guys have they get 
Christmas cookies. They get uh, business cards telling them that people that they're an executive producer. Um, and, uh, and and you can put down your resume. You fund the show. You help the show out. We're and we're growing some stuff from from what we're getting uh, from that. And thank you so much, everybody, supporting that. And you don't need to give uh, do anything financially. You can also just share the show if you're digging what we're uh, doing over at the Awesome Cast. So let's get into our awesome things of the week, John. I I got I got to ask about. John Carmen, I got to ask about. Uh, 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 this so one. Sorg did not watch Saturday Night Live. That's what I, I did found not. Out I did about. not watch. No, I okay. I watched the Star Killer base one. Yeah, uh, that, that's it, why I watched it. <laughs> that's why I watched that episode. Yeah. So what is the guy? Oh, uh, that was so. So guy Fi yeah. is a. Um, it's a, a booth in Manhattan. A phone, an, an old unused phone booth in Manhattan that's been set up as a. Uh, private uh space for masturbation what (laughs) (laughs) bye well that's how this show's going today what part of manhattan uh 28th and fifth avenue Hmm. and uh a lot of friends there it was it well everyone's friend friendly there uh it was set up by hot octopus a sex toy company there's two s's in octopus boys and uh it's not actually you know um officially uh, legalized to masturbate in public, so <laughs> they 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 did send out a statement That's saying awesome. that uh, the brand is not actively encouraging people to masturbate in public, as that is an illegal offense. And there's just really a curtain, uh, free Wi-Fi, and a laptop, and hand sanitizer. I don't know if there might be a hand <laughs> pump of some sort of liquid, but it, I don't know if there is left. And uh, I don't know if anyone's actually used it. I, I searched on Twitter to see if anyone said, like, you know, just got done using the guy fire. Um, it's funny because it, it it's, you know, in only in the past five days that you'll see references to the guy fire masturbation booth. And everything before five days ago is if you search guy fire is a reference to Guy Fieri. And you, I realize that you can't spell Guy Fieri without. I Guy-Fi. noticed next. So, Ooh. so, so here I, I, I search for Guy Fi, and yeah, like, like the second thing down is Guy Fieri's Wikipedia page. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. And I mean, you could actually go to the sex toy company's website. It's it's pretty safe for work. Um, Hot octopus, two s's. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that is that? Oh, I work for Hot Octopus two s's yeah like like in 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 like when they're out at meetings and introducing themselves leave on the last they have s to say it. for sexy i mean really what kind of meetings you know are they going to it's expected uh but it's not only is it not safe is it safe for this show anyway uh it's actually a very tech oriented sex toy company they only have like like one toy and variations on it it looks classy the That's, pulse yeah it's uh yeah it's a, it's a sex toy for men but then there's like a po- there's a version for couples. Mm-hmm. It's uh is are these the guys that were at CES? Uh actually are there a lot of sex Apparently, companies Apparently there was yeah. there was a good bit that popped because up. It, doesn't it go on at the same time as like Well no no, no well, there was like some kind of uh uh adult video award expo. like expo but yeah. I, I so actually so it might just kind of cross over then. Ooh. Or was it E3 that that happens in next to? I know. I think it was CES. It was CES. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. But yeah. So um, you can uh, completely two for if you're going out for for press for work, yeah. I guess. Well, the site doesn't get too technical uh, or too detailed, but there, it's it's a type of vibrating, the type of vibration that's uh, brand new. So a type of vibration. It's a type of vibration. It's a different type of vibration that's supposed that's, to that's create a sensation unlike any other. What is that? That's that's the pulse to where does, solo. Where does that go? <laughs> oh, um, Mike, there should be a diagram. Yeah, I think that's down. It's down with a, like something like this. What? There you go. With it looks a like a neti pot. No, a you don't. A little bit. It's not your for your nose. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a neti pot. I don't want to. I don't want to describe it. No, no, we'll, we'll leave that to your uh, imagination. You guys can go to the website. You better and ask your father about there. that. Um, okay, well, with that, I'm putting the Pornhub Minecraft story back into the rundown. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's that's that was you know. not in the dock. <laughs> it wasn't because I'm took like, it off. I'm, well, if Dutters was here, I completely would have left it in the dock. But I'm like, we got new people. I didn't want to leave an impression, and then oh I my let, goodness, then I let John go first. You so, don't know me very well. There we go. <laughs> So there you go. Um, well, okay. The guy fi in hot, hot octopus two s's uh, dot com. If you want to 
get more. Oh, I got to that diagram. I'm glad I didn't yeah, let oh. that go. Okay. Did we get the diagram? Yeah, I'm okay. not putting that diagram up. I think it's... No, it's the, I want to see the diagram. I don't know if I'm okay with that. Well, okay, we'll see if YouTube pulls us after this one. So look, there's the diagram. So there's your idea. Oh, no, it's just a, it's a drawing. Oh, Dude, I've seen so much worse on YouTube. That's true. <laughs> so it? that's, you know, Solo oh. on the left. I don't want to tell you what the white thing is. That's uh, interesting. Yeah. So that's wow. the that's the Pulse 2 duo that vibrates, I guess, on both sides. Huh. Okay. Apologies to the uh, audio listeners out there right now. No, it's a, it's amazing. <laughs> There's it so many different websites massager. coming out with sex toys. Oh it's yeah. It's like a whole new, whole new frontier out there, people. Do you think they're sexy when they look like? What you mean when they're drawn like that? When I they're mean, drawn they... like that, when they look like something that came out of design school. No. Yeah, me neither. No, I prefer like 1985. Mike, pull up a picture of like a realist. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. No, we're not doing that on this show. <laughs> for, just for comparison. It is the viewers, awesome cast. No, yeah. it is. Okay. That, maybe if this is the Wrestling Mayhem show, I completely do it. But no, the, we, we, the, yeah, okay. Um, I just want to say my topic is not this interesting. How what? would that fit into the Wrestling Mayhem <laughs> no. show? Well, we did we did like have sex toys as an affiliate program for a while. So. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah we did the, uh, the flashlight. What's, oh, wow. What's a flashlight? No, a, oh. no, a flashlight. Oh. For female oh. viewers who don't know what a flashlight is. No, I don't know what a flashlight is. <laughs> well, I'll let you guys Google that later. Okay. Um, or off off the air. Um, <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, James, what's what's your awesome thing of the week? Let's, let's bring this one out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, it's not nearly as uh, titillating. <laughs> so we have four days left until the Pittsburgh Retro Gaming Convention. This mm -hmm. is the second year for us. Uh, all proceeds benefit Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. So it's Zedek Staza in the strip. Uh, you know, it's family friendly, so a little different <laughs> than everything else That's we've good. talked about so far. That's good. If you made it this far, it's a good note <laughs> at this point. Um, so, no, yeah, this is an awesome thing you guys got going on here uh, down at the strip. Um, so, so what can people expect uh, uh, from this event when, when, when they come in? So we have a few game tournaments. Uh, some of the tournaments will be free, and even the, the charge paid tournaments are only $5 to enter. Uh, we have some interactive panels. So uh, we have a local Matt Mangone, who's a claw machine expert. We'll be giving a panel on using the claw machine. Any of you that are familiar with the Fallout 4 panel, uh, Fallout 4 is a game. We're putting together a Gorilla Fallout 4 panel. We have some local locksmiths. We have some uh, public speaking teachers going through Charisma. And we have uh, some little hands-on stealth activities. We have someone detailing Atari, the history of, and hidden gems. You know, there's cosplay. There's a masquerade tournament for an hour. We have a maid cafe upstairs. Are any of you familiar with the maid cafe? I am not, not familiar. Okay, so maid cafe is, is something that's not uh, very commonly in Pittsburgh, but they're very common at larger anime conventions. So it's something worth checking out, but it's uh, essentially a, a Japanese uh, themed food, drink, uh, experience. Uh, a group of local cosplay girls are running it that also work closely with children's. So there's uh, some theme and dancing, and uh, it's kind of its own little, very PG version of a, an anime strip club, I guess, is a good way to, oh to put it in context. Oh my. That's <laughs> so let's go. Hilarious. Let's go. It's, it's a PG version. So, you know, okay. we don't want to go back to the beginning of this loop. We started that. <laughs> but, you know, it, it should be a ton of fun. This is the second year. So last year, we had about 3,000 people show up, and we expected to be uh, hopefully double. You know, we have just that, that many already in pre-sales. Mm -hmm. and, and you got something else cool going on here. Um, I, I noticed that at the bottom of the page, uh, you have this uh, Germ Squashers game happening, and that, that's on a lot of different interesting platforms. Yeah, so I own 8-Bit Evolution. So we make new games for old consoles. So a way we wanted to contribute this year and expand what we can actually give back to children's is is with a game. So we synced up with the children's marketing team and we created Germ Squashers. So it's an action static platform game. And if you beat all 10 levels, you will get a super flu shot. There's a lot of germs to destroy. You can think of it as a, an 8-bit version of Splatoon on a static screen. So we have it on iOS, Android, uh, original Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and if we could expedite a timeline, it would have also been released on the Wii U. So it won't be on the Wii U in time. 
for the event, but it will be released but a month after because we nice. are official Nintendo developers. Nice, nice. So what, what does it take? What does it take to get a game onto uh, a Sega Genesis and, or uh, or or a Nintendo cartridge? Like, what, do you, do you can you get blank ones or how, how does that work? We own a reaction injection molds for brand new shells, and we made our own PCBs. So the PCBs are the boards inside. So most people that make games use EEPROMs, which are an antiquated IC chip. Uh, we use TSOPs. They're a little easier to access and get a higher quality of. And they play just the same, but they have higher capacity. So we can load a little bit of music on it. It still works within the confines of the NES console, but it gives a little better quality of your product to collectors. And we try to give a complete box experience. So the special edition one is going to have a few extra pack-ins. We have some themed hand sanitizer and a hospital badge and a nice, you know, 12 page full color manual. We have a small recipe book included for quick, healthy video game snacks for all ages. You know, that'll be our, our special edition. Limited edition is going to have a day of limited release number one, 200 copies with the manual. And then the regular cart will be available for sale online for anybody. Nice. Nice. And where can people go check out the event and uh, check out more about the game? So the website is pittsburghretrogaming.com, and you can also look at 8bedevolution.com for more preview and video gameplay of Germ Squashers. Uh, one link to the other. So uh, if you can remember either one of them, it, the next one will be one click away. Nice, nice. Go check it out. And, and we're going to uh, we're looking to be down there uh, here this Saturday, and uh, hopefully getting a little bit of uh, uh, footage of everything going on. So people can check it out if you didn't make it down to this one. Uh, but I definitely recommend it. It sounds like it's going to be a fun, fun event. And, and I'm loving I'm loving that these uh, these retro game things have been uh, have been popping up. I mean, there's a few groups uh, apparently around. Um, like I think wasn't there like a replay FX last summer? So at some point, mm-hmm. um, and I, and I understand that was a pretty cool thing up at uh, David Lawrence uh, Convention Center. Um, is, is yeah, it, replay is great, and uh, Mark from Replay will be there at a booth. Awesome. So if you have, have any questions about that event, yeah, you'll be able to connect with them directly, check out the T-shirts, uh, look at some of the previews they have. Uh, if I'm understanding it correctly, you know, Mark expects to grow the event about 30% this year, wow. which is pretty big considering how large it was last year. Oh, my. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. I, I'm loving this retro throwback stuff. It, it, it's oh, good too. stuff. Between that and looking for group coming up, we just had our – uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show 10 year party over at Looking for Group last Thursday. And I love that just video gaming is, is just feels so alive between that and we got Shell Games doing a bunch of fun stuff down in Southside. Uh, uh, it, 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 it seems like like this is becoming kind of a gaming town a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's really cool to see. And, and, and then plus yeah, all you know, uh, Looking but, for Group and Shell will actually both be at the convention. So nice. if anyone's listening and hasn't heard of any of them, they'll all be there to meet. Yeah, go check them out. Thanks a lot. Uh, and check it out at uh, Pittsburgh, um, Pittsburgh, uh, uh, RetroGaming.com. I want to go for the Claw Seminar. The Claw? I, I know. Right, the Claw. I know. I wonder if the Claw... Are they teaching you the tricks? They're going to teach... It sounds like he's teaching you the inside tricks. Mm-hmm. And I or wonder if the Claw around. Machine... Like, claw business. companies hate him. See right, now. yeah. Will I he bet. be shut down? <laughs> Ground rounds oh, everywhere no. suffering. And, and I'm bringing Chachi. And Chachi's already a Claw Machine addict. So, at it? yeah. Is yeah. he good at it? Uh, uh, he's persistent, we there, can say. Well, there's some there's some really great prizes in some of those. I'm not talking yeah. about the Kmart, you know, where you but pick up an egg and you Denny's get, Denny's like, has a nice collection in there. In Denny's sense. has a nice... But if you go to some of the ones at Dave & Buster's, there's, like, DVDs. They have CDs. They have yeah. all kinds of stuff that I can never pick up. Yeah. The yeah. harder things... Yeah, it slides right off. Yeah. So, hey, well, it also depends on the claw and how they're adjusted. It does they're mm-hmm. calibrated differently. Well, he's going to tell us all about it. Oh, we'll learn. <laughs> I'm taking notes. <laughs> I, I want to learn. <laughs> well, there you go. Destination right there. All right. And uh, uh, Marta, what's your awesome thing? Oh, week? my goodness. I feel, like, I, I feel like I should change mine halfway through because I just thought of one. So for Christmas, it's not really of the week, but I got it for Christmas. I got this new um, scuba diving mask and it's super tech where it has the camera right in the middle of where your glasses would be Mm -hmm. and you can take video and photography with it. And I found out about it on my last trip. A guy had it and it's the video and pictures are amazing. So your hand, you know, the GoPro, you have to, I had one of those too. You have to snap it to your wrist and it's all over the place when you're trying to swim. If you're trying to swim, this one's it's right where you're looking. 
anywhere you're looking. What's it called? Awesome. I can't remember. <laughs> That's the amazing part about it. Uh, it. I cannot remember. I have it. I posted a picture with my face in it, not underwater, because I was that excited. Mm -hmm. But it oh. is super cool, and I can't wait to use it because I saw. I've seen the end product. Mm -hmm. It takes four AA batteries, <laughs> and it's waterproof. Is it this one here? chance yes it is oh there it is it's the liquid image scuba Boom. hd 720p dive camera that's my baby medium sized and they actually got it at westmarine.com for about 130 dollars right yeah now. it's not bad so the one that i found so uh yeah that's not bad at all if you're, if you're i mean I, I don't know how much uh, mass probably it, don't run that high to begin with it is got a camera it's not that bad because the the gopros are expensive uh i was I was the sucker that bought the very first one, so all of my videos were you. not that great. That was me. That yeah, was you, well, you heard about me, huh? Yeah, yeah, I know. I saw it on around YouTube. the block. <laughs> yeah. I all of bad. them are blue and green, just like like swivels. They're like, what is? What are you taking? <laughs> Nothing. It's a go. Might not be pro. It's not yet. pro. I feel bad though because we'll have to go back and I didn't look up what kind of batteries the pulse takes. So it, probably double A. You did probably a I would imagine yeah. that's a double A kind of situation. Over double there. A yeah. fits everything. Yeah, 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 no problem there. Take them out of the remote. <laughs> fits the remote. Um, geez, I don't know. I, this, I don't know if I should share this one, <laughs> and I'm gonna have to pull it up here. That was a segue. Uh, no, well, I, you know what? I'm gonna. You guys have. You guys have inspired me. Oh. Because, again, this is another thing that, that, you know what, I might as well go with the theme. I, this is a weird one that I shared to, to, to uh, the, the, the co-hosts on, on Slack, and I'm going to try to uh, bring it up here and actually operate a camera at the same time. Um, there is an app, and I haven't dived into it. I installed it. It was free. Uh, I did not pay for this, uh, but apparently it was a dollar. Uh, it's called Nude. Okay. And what it does, and hopefully I have some images for you. No, not those kinds of images. Uh, very shortly, it, it, it takes images. Wait, is it? Does it have multiple U's, or did you just pronounce it like? No, I just nude. I just like saying nude. It's called the nudifier. What? <laughs> what does it do? I mean, what you do is you take a picture, and oh it will rework a picture to make it and and pixelate it appropriately <laughs> to make it look like it's a it's a. A nude picture. A nude picture that it isn't. I feel oh, like man. this is very 2001 when everybody discovered Photoshop. A little bit, but hey, some but of us. But this is without Photoshop. Some, this is on the go. Some right? of you are a little late right. to the party. Right, right. <laughs> but now there's an app for that. Yeah. And you oh, don't even oh, that's need to an Photoshop. App. That's an okay. app. Yeah. Yes. So right on your iPhone. Oh, my. That's dangerous. <laughs> That is so dangerous. So, um, nude. Amuse yourself doing conferences. You yes. can make the claw guy nude. Well, okay. So, how cool one application that you could use it for is people that get nervous public speaking. Yes. You know how they say you shouldn't, you know, imagine the audience nude or, well, in their underwear, whatever, topless. That would be perfect for that. Yeah, there'd be an awkward moment where he speaker comes out, takes a picture, runs this app. Or someone walks past you and looks over your shoulder. Right. And um, they apparently have a partnership with the Dirty Grandpa movie <laughs> to go with it with uh, Robert De Niro. That's apparently coming out. Talk I, about a sponsorship. Yeah, oh, the one with Zac go. Efron? Uh, yeah, I think so. I yeah. saw the preview for that. So nah, this one know. right here. So, uh, uh, yep. There you go. Um, hey, there's a, the, the, that, was, that was fun. <laughs> Uh, it's called a Nudifier by Pony Code Corporation. If you want to check that out, it's uh, iOS. I don't know if there's an Android version. I didn't get that deep into it, uh, so maybe we'll play around with that a little bit here in the next week. John, I want to take a picture of you before you leave here, and uh, we'll see how it works. This, I think, Sawtooth nude. <laughs> what? <laughs> different show. Just be, that's a different show. That's oh. that's uh, that's our hobo show, uh, Sawtooth Willie, over on YouTube and Facebook. Um, so welcome to the weirdest. How is how is how are, did we get this dirty? And Dutters isn't even here. You brought me on. But we need a picture of Dutters now. Well, there you go. Who's Dutters? The usual co-host. Um, anyways, uh, uh, thank you everybody for your awesome things of the week. Uh, but we got to give a shout out, and I'm sure they're gonna love the plug after all that we've talked about. Slice on Broadway, our good friends supporting uh, the perfect pepperoni pizza for Pittsburgh podcasting for over. Almost two years now. 
Uh, they're right here on the tracks in uh, Beachview here in the South Hills. Hey, we talked a lot about the South Hills over on Awesome Chat with Josh Lucas on here. Uh, that's going to be popping up this week. And uh, this is one of the cool things, one of the great places. Uh, uh, it's not Dirty Grandpa. This thing isn't updated right away. There we go. Uh, SliceOnBroadway.com right here in Beachview or down on Main Street in Carnegie, PA. Uh, Rico and the rest of the guys have been awesome to us the whole time. I actually provided pizza for our, our party, like I mentioned uh, uh, last week, our, our 10-year party for Wrestling Mayhem show over at Looking for Group. And, uh, and it's really good stuff, and you guys got the sample, It of is course. really good pizza. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll vouch for that. There you go. It, it keeps the people coming. Like uh, John, John, John uh, uh, has to come in studio every time because of it, and I appreciate that. And I'm from New York, and he's from so New York. I know pizza, and we've had and we've had Mad Mike has been down here giving giving the thumbs up to uh, Slice on Broadway as well. He lived in the Bronx for a bit, so he's surrounded by by awesome pizza. So uh, there you go from the export. Sli- sl- check him out. Pch underscore Slice on the Twitters. Slice on uh, Slice on Broadway on Facebook. And uh, on Instagram, and you'll get hungry too. Let them know you heard about them on the Awesome Cast. Thank you so much to them. South Hills is getting so much love this week. There's, it is. It's all about it. We got hey, it's our area. Brewing. I'm like, oh my god, it's all about <laughs> South Hills. You can't get stuff. out of it. It's good stuff. More people should be coming down this way. You know, hanging out and and doing. You know, a lot of people yeah. were coming down during rush hour. I noticed. Well, there's so that too. I think your your they job is done. They have to stop done. along the but way. But the problem is, there's thousands of people on that train. Passing all the good yes. stuff in Beachview mm. and, and not stopping off. They're on their way to their library and 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 Mount Lebanon and and whatever else out that way. The mall, I guess. Mm. Um, and 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 you know, it gives them a reason to stop off, get a piece on the way. So there's a train, you say? There's a train. There's a trolley. We call it the T well, for some reason. The T stop. I've never figured out exactly where I can drive on the trolley tracks. Just right in the middle. Oh, Just I've right I've, in the middle. I've turned down. I used to live. We used to live on uh, Mattern in the D, and I've, I've on a dark night, on a snowy night, when I first got here, I mm-hmm. turned down that wrong. Yeah, I've gone the right wrong in the way. middle, like right oh, by the gas station. Oh, you rode the tracks. I rode that track. <laughs> yeah, I feel like everybody. Raise your hand if you're listening have, in who has rode that. that track because it's confusing. There's no posted signage. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. And I, it, it tricks me even now. I've lived here my whole We're life. We're talking about like the Pioneer Station over in Dormont uh-huh. uh, on Potomac. Yep. And then, yeah, on Potomac. Right by Street. Alberts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's a South Hills <laughs> usual um, from there. So, uh, but yeah, we're, well, we are the last place that has tracks on the road, you know, that you ride along like San Francisco style, you know. Uh, they have like them. Mr. Rogers. Yeah, like Mr. Yeah. Rogers. Just like Mr. Rogers. Ding, ding. Is this the neighborhood that I always saw at the beginning of Mr. Rogers, I wonder? I think that was a tiny little... Well, I, I think that was a model. Well, there is yeah, that. Yeah, I think it was a model. I, okay. But yes, we'll give it to you. Okay, yes. thank you. Thank you. Yep. Beach Just, view, people. Justify my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we got a couple other fun things. Uh, Marta, I think you submitted our app of the week, um, going with our, our very interesting themes for tonight. Um, tell us tell us about this. I So I don't know if it's a good app or a bad app. Does it make it, people I, new? It was interesting. It could, technically. Um, it's I believe it's called Just Fucking Do It. it was Did I get that right? I'm going to look it up. Just There's Fucking a, yeah, Do It app? We have a theme. So... This is the curiosity that I have about this app. So this app is for goals that you want to set for yourself and you put forth money. Say you put forth like a hundred dollars and then you put your goal in there and you have to meet the goal or else you lose that hundred dollars. My question is where is the money going but it i mean it it's an interesting that's how they fund themselves is this it the, uh, that's it yes go fucking do it go fucking do it dot com like it, it'll have if you bring it up on your app it'll say lose 10 pounds or mm-hmm. travel to china or do whatever and you can put any dollar amount it just gives you an incentive to do it because wow. it will take your money if you don't do it and you can also challenge someone so enter a goal Yes. Put in the date, like lazy, put in the pay. I just feel bad for that person. You're just calling them lazy. You're like, just, just lazy. call people out. It's again, yeah. and I'm not sure where does that money go. That's the thing. You got that makes you very nervous, especially for people with joint bank accounts. 
like in an unhappy marriage. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, that's what I think is of. There a, is, like, is there a limit? Is there a maximum you can bet? Like a hundred dollars? I don't know. Everything in here, uh, the the samples they were giving, uh, looks like it's from like I will organize my life for two fifty. I will start a blog or pay one hundred. Yeah. Well, organize my life. That's a very vague yeah. goal. My I goodness. know. Yeah, yeah. Very vague. Too vague. Oh, what are these New Year's resolutions? Come on, you yeah. need to be a little a little more realistic. It's here. only a January app. Yeah. <laughs> It can get people into trouble, definitely. It's big this month, and then and it's then like, you will not get your money unless you take me to such and such or Shanghai. I don't wow. know. I mean, it makes it, sense. It, to... I, I thought it was interesting, though. It's it's a good motivational thing if you want to push yourself to do something, but I think I'd be pretty jacked if I lost that hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, James, what do you what do you think of this? Uh, I think it's a pretty sweet idea I should have came up with before. <laughs> Angry. <laughs> I mean, I, I, li- I like the idea and concept. There should be uh, some kind of social media integration where your friends can bet against you, and that could be a new revenue stream. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm, I'm digging through some of this on the next web. They're talking about it. Uh, the site was started uh, by a founder of YouTube uh, channel Panda Mix Show as part of a bid to launch 12 new startups in 12 months. Oh, and there you go. That's right. an incentive. That, that's that's one way to do it. That's I mean, that's goal. that's how uh, Meerkat w- was kind of started because it, they were just iterating versions of video startups, and then Meerkat just popped, and they kind of stuck with it because uh, they, in you know, that kind of like kind of serial. I'm going to start something, start something, mm-hmm. start something until something pops up. Um, is it really interesting yeah. way to go? It sounds like he made his own go effing do it. You know, <laughs> to he did it, and then he was like one day just sitting there like, oh genius but it it really does give you an incentive it's like being in college where there's a paper due you have to get it done even if you're just staying up all night the last night mm-hmm. uh there is a note on next web about if you don't make this deadline uh the dot com collects the money but the site is considering doing a charity payout from that money oh so so this could and, and i think that'd be more incentive to do something well isn't that weird because now you're like well i improved myself <laughs> or I help charity. It's kind of a uh, yeah. Where sorry, hungry kids. I don't know at that point. So, but that could be that could be fun. I mean, that that could get people motivated. It's interesting. Yeah. So it's interesting. We'll see. I don't know. This could phase in a bit. Um, Is that really the best app this week, though? <laughs> it's not the best one, but I thought I, it was no, interesting. We, we don't have to have the best okay. one. This isn't a rating system here. I it's think just it's hard to find. It's the, the it's the one that got your attention. You know? I feel like there's an app coming out every second, so to find the best one is tough. There mm-hmm. was one that I saw, and I can't remember the name for it. It was uh, It offered to poll your friends on where you want to go or what you want to do that evening mm-hmm. it was pretty cool as of this article it said the site has been had been open for a week and already uh over ten thousand dollars of pledges had been made i wonder how much those they're people, at now yeah how much how much they got back <laughs> someone's just sitting crying somewhere what, what, what broke it, what do you need for overhead for a site like this? I mean, you know, couldn't much, you just lie? How does the how do the finances work? Are they in limbo? You know, how does that how? It's an what? escrow account. Yeah, it's there you just, go. There you go. We need to go track these people down and ask some that's questions. That's fascinating. So there you go. Okay, so we had um uh you know again tracking back looking for group. We had some fun this weekend, and we talked. We've been talking for it seems like ever since the beginning of the show. Uh, 281 episodes ago uh, about about virtual reality and now we're so close we have uh, 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 we have ship dates we have pre-orders for uh, Oculus Rift and, and the was it the HTC Vibe mm-hmm. I think it is Vive mm-hmm. that uh, they're doing with Steam uh, well we uh, you know they have an Oculus Rift over at Looking for Group over in Brookline and it's always fun to make sure uh, people are trying it out for the first time because you don't get a lot of opportunity to get a freaking VR headset on your head and uh, so so we had to make sure that happened. Uh, so a few of our friends did check it out. Oop, we lost somebody there. A um, few of our friends were checking out. There's a there's a our friend Jen getting scared while she was playing the uh, horror game. Uh, so that was fun. Uh, what game? The, it, horror. It, it, a horror, horror, scary game. horror, horror, scary game. And she got touched on the ear and freaked out. Ooh. So. Oh, uh, that's a thing. Yeah. 
Well, she got touched on the ear by her friend. Oh, and, okay. And, and I'm like, I there. don't want to wear that headset. No, 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 no. 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 <laughs> uh, but but we, I, I made sure to kind of touch base with a few of them that tried it out, and uh, and we were talking about it um, at, at the party. And our friend Chad from Wrestling Mayhem Show, uh, Chad the Shad over there, um, he's saying it's much better to try it than watch others in a stage or online. Uh, he had some fun with it and, and thought it was pretty cool, and he's, he's not a big advocate of VR tech. Uh, it sparked an interest in what's available and what's coming now. Uh, being a P- PS4 user, he's more likely to see what theirs is like when it's released. And that was his discussion because like, they were seeing like on stage at E3. Mm-hmm. And you really, you're like, you don't know what the big deal is, right? Until you can get what get hands on with one of these things, right? I, it scares the crap out of me. Well, why? Because I've, I've read two books that are so into that and they're terrifying. One was a local author called Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Thomas Sweeterlidge. And talked about virtual reality that was like plugged into your brain, like, like in the style. future. Yeah, well, there was a bunch of chords and stuff. And and then mm-hmm. the other one, of course, is Ready Player One. So it's like, oh, I don't know. I had that book sitting it's there. Terrible. I got on Lo- I got on Loot Crate like last year, and I still haven't. Uh, you ever read Ready Player One? I have not. Yet. Oh, you? I'm I'm a little jealous that you're going to get to experience it like for the first time. <laughs> it's so good. That's it's awesome. excellent. I'm not that dude. I haven't done it's a like fi- crack. I haven't done a full fiction book that wasn't a graphic novel for a good long time. So it's probably not actually like crack. So don't no, don't scare him off. I won't scare Sorg, you because Sorg doesn't do crack. He doesn't do crack. So he the audio book, book is now. really good too. Uh, Will Wheaton does a really great job. Oh, yeah. The stank oh wow, it's wow. pretty good. Um, oh, that should have been my awesome thing. Uh, I've been poking around the Carne- Carnegie Library in, here in Pittsburgh. I, I, it's awesome that I can get any book in the system, and it, it delivers right up here, up the road in the Beachview uh, uh, outlet. That's a nice library. And, uh, it, oh, geez, it's yeah, gorgeous. It, and, and it's it, it's 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 a beacon at the end of my yeah. road as well. It's bright. And they leave the lights on. I thought at it night. was a church. It's it, well, the church is on the other side. You oh. can't see the church anymore. <laughs> it's just the bright lights <laughs> of shine. reading. So whatever that statement is, there you go. Um, <laughs> But uh, but they but they have audiobooks and ebooks and everything and now it used to be I've checked it out years ago and it would download like WMVs and of course it's not going to work with your iPhone and uh, but now they're they're updated in the app it all works together and and it's good to go so um, but oh but I wanted I'm going back to the, the the rest of the VR conversation um, it was cool to see that our uh, uh, the game that we had been playing the one, the one that I latched onto and made sure everybody else was checking out is called um, I Expect You to Die. And it's this game where you're in a car and you're a spy and you have to figure... You're in the, you're in the villain's car and it's trying to kill you. And you have to figure out how to get out of the plane, the cargo plane that you're in, without the car killing you. And the, the, the compartment's uh, filling with, with gas. You have to defuse a bomb that pops out. Oh, how cool is it's, that? It's really cool, a, a first-person experience, and just seeing people uh, pop in there. Uh, this is made by Shell Games, we mentioned earlier, uh, here in Pittsburgh. Oh, wow. I, I had no idea about that. So um, uh, that's this is one of the two games that I've heard uh, the... Uh, the uh, uh, Keep talking or everybody explodes. I think it's called uh, is another one where it's like kind of a bomb thing, and you have somebody else there that can't see the bomb that has a manual. Um, but this has been a really cool first person experience. You're really just sitting in a car, solving the puzzle of the car. So I and, love puzzle games. And uh, and you look around and you can see it. There's a gun on the back seat and all this stuff. Like the 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 the, the game lobby is kind of in an office, and the one guy just sat there and he was lighting stuff on fire. You know, uh, so uh, it's 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 interesting. Um, uh, 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 James, have you had a chance to uh, get your head into a uh, Oculus VR or anything like that? Yeah, we actually went to E3 last year, and we got to check out some of the VR stuff that on display. That the lines were incredibly long, yeah. and uh, everyone was most excited, I'd say, about that more than anything else. Mm-hmm. And I what, thought the Oculus is very cool. It, I can't wait for it to be mainstream and easily accessible. Mm-hmm. And you know, as all technology, once it starts uh, getting some momentum. I can't wait to develop for it. I'd love to have some of our 8-bit products on it. Yeah, how would that work? So how, how would it work to put like an 8-bit game on? They on just be flat <laughs> 2D objects. So, so I mean, in fact, if you Google uh, like Pokemon Oculus Rift, you can see how original no Game Boy games look ported oh, to Oculus. I'm going to look this up. So now I've seen, because uh, we've had an, um, the, the Samsung Oculus uh, sure. in here, and I know 
uh, there's like a Netflix app on there. And it's really just you're sitting there and there's a movie, right. but you can turn your head either way and not look at the movie, basically, right? Like it's just kind right. of floating out in front of you. So is that what we kind of envision these 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 flat 2D games to that? Well, I'd say for the for uh, Netflix, there's like a very narrow focused vision for what you're doing. Right. But whereas with an 8-bit game, uh, you're still mobile. You know, there's a lot more than just looking left and right. You'd, you'd be able to walk towards objects. Envision a static screen, uh, static screen game where you're still in a first-person perspective, but instead of it being top-down, bird's-eye view, it would be from the eyes of the player. Mm-hmm. We got a little bit on video here of the, uh, the, the, the Pokemon VR unofficial app that they have going on. Now, this sort of reminds me of uh, uh, back in the day when we used to play the N64 like Pokemon Snap um, <laughs> that you were supposed to take pictures. Well, we just ended up chucking apples at Pikachu until he knocked out. So, uh, no, that, that, that's awesome. We'll see how that goes. Uh, so it, it's a pretty cool interface. I love there's like this kind of floaty um, because those not familiar Pokemon's kind of an RPG game where you just kind of select actions and they, and they and they go. There's kind of like a floater uh, menu that you get to pop out. And, and interact with in this in this version they're showing off here. It's like a Pokemon Pit Boy. <laughs> yeah, kind of, kind of. So. I'd love to see a Zelda. Oh, that'd be great. <sighs> yeah, you know what? I think I've seen like a uh, a fan made like mock up of something like that. It's a very small scope, of course, but mm-hmm. I think that's almost everyone's first thing to port whenever any new gaming medium pops up. <laughs> oh yeah, Wind Waker. Just bring it back for oh, my would be awesome as if they know just as we're talking about the gamer guy at the post gazette is uh tweeting out a story he just did on uh, virtual reality although everybody's doing this right now they're 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 checking out uh i mean there's a lot of this is what virtual reality is in 2016 like this is the technology this is really what we're going to get our hands on this year um this isn't sdks this isn't the thing that you stick your phone in that's made out of cardboard okay although that was fun too mm. um <laughs> like it, it's it's accessible expensive but accessible if you really want to uh, this year. And, and it's just going to get uh, easier and more accessible for people as years go on. It's going to be a pack-in with, like, the next Xbox. Oh, I can almost man. guarantee it. Like, Connect was. You know, people won't get as mad about it. So, um, And they'll be researching it here in Oakland. Yes, they will. As they research everything over there. Um, so, and, well, that's right. Facebook. Yeah, they're, the they're Facebook, coming to Pittsburgh. Oculus. And they're, it's going to be... It, so, it, it's going to be... Purely an Oculus. It's office? purely Oculus mm-hmm. Research. Okay. So not just Oculus, but Oculus Research. Interesting. Yeah. It's Interesting. All coming to Pittsburgh. There you go. Um, all right. Well, uh, let's touch. We'll touch on some more stories here in a moment. Uh, but first, hey, please check out if you're out there and looking to uh, need some help for podcasting with some web stuff, with some social media. Um, of course, we got a new spinoff going on here, Sidekick Media Services. Uh, you can check out sidekickmediaservices.com. We've got some great educational uh, series uh, uh, coming up, which I do here monthly. Um, I'm actually going to be talking about Squarespace. Are you familiar with the Squarespace? If you listen to other podcasts, you're probably familiar with Squarespace because they advertise everywhere. Um, and, uh, and and it's a, 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 a good platform uh, for people that uh, don't need to get technically into uh, WordPress and everything. Uh, and uh, we're going to have a little fun with that. We have some great uh, had some great sessions on Intro to Podcasting. If you sign up for the newsletter uh, over there or at sorgatronmedia.com, you'll actually get that uh, webinar for free. And uh, any other services or anything, uh, please let us know. Take a look at the demo reel. And uh, it's not just it's not just podcasting we do around here. Um, so uh, please go check that out. Sidekickmediaservices.com. Okay, so we got a bunch of stories here. Um, Marta, I think this is you. Uh, 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 tiny houses built for the homeless in Seattle? Yeah, sorry. It just <laughs> it caught my eye. It, it's uh, this guy, this homeless guy that is a carpenter, and he just built all of these tiny little houses in Seattle for homeless people. And they're like just like a, like a line of them. And he is homeless or he, he was homeless? He, I, I believe he is homeless because he is living there as well. And each home costs about 2000 bucks, um, And it's mainly they collected it from charitable donations and all the fix-ins in it. To, and everybody's pitching in to help build them. And they're for homeless people. And they, they're good. I think they're going to continue to do it. So I just thought it was really neat. I was, I was excited about it. And I'm – it tied in I'm, – I'm going to – Portugal to volunteer to help build houses for the homeless um, in March. So mm. I was like, oh my goodness, that's cool. It's, you know, it's coming here. It's pretty neat. It's awesome. Yeah, I was excited about it. Awesome. 
Um, not tech. Not, well, no, that, that counts. It's awesome, you know. So, uh, hey, something kind of you know, eh, sort of techy. Uh, I, I love watching checking NASA stories myself, and uh, I thought this was cool. The astronauts uh, astronauts grow their first flower in space. Ooh. So uh, those that watched the the Martian, I understand, are very excited about this. I just watched uh, that. Actually, did you? Yeah. I have not yet. I haven't either. Yeah. Uh, so well, he references you... the Martian in the, the the actual astronaut. Yes. References. Yes. So um, that's cool. So yeah, astronaut uh, Scott Kelly can uh, uh, <laughs> grasp about uh, a, a, a green thumb all night, all day. Uh, so, no, this is uh, the first flyer in space uh, after Zinnia plants, the ISS crew uh, planet almost died. Uh, the astronauts uh, started growing uh, Zinnias late last year, but a mere two weeks later, the team noticed symptoms of excessively high humidity and limited airflow. So, I mean, this shows that we can we can do something out yeah. there and grow something up there. We and, can't in Pittsburgh. And, and apparently not in but Pittsburgh. Not right now, that's for sure, right? <laughs> not here. <laughs> but up there you can. Not in the frozen tundras of Pittsburgh yes. these days. Uh, so, no, I thought that was pretty cool. And there's a beautiful flower right there for you from the space station. So I thought you were going to, when you said NASA, I actually thought you were going to say that awesome thing that Bowie got its own constellation. Oh, I didn't hear about yeah, that. Yeah, he got his own, like, uh, Thunderbolt, you know, his makeup mm-hmm. from Ziggy. That's, that's awesome. Pew, pew, that's his constellation. That's awesome. Yeah. That's good. I know. I was pretty excited. Uh, and Starman was actually in the soundtrack of the movie, The Martian. Oh, really? Yeah. I was watching that today, and it came on. It was just so perfect. You know, it made me think of, uh, just wonder how many movies and, and media oh. have songs by Bowie that we so haven't many. even realized. There were, there were so many um, uh, great tributes and geeks talking about Bowie and, and influence. I'm not a big, wasn't huge in the Bowie. I, I, I love the Labyrinth. For instance, <laughs> everybody but, you know, loves the labyrinth. The labyrinth, even and people that, that don't like the labyrinth, like the labyrinth. Exactly. I mean, that's one of those those pinnacle kind of kind of movies uh, from your childhood, and, and seeing those kinds of things, um, and uh, even uh, Square Enix. Uh, that, you know, Bowie was part of a video game in the late '90s mm-hmm. called Omicron. It's actually they were letting you download it for free. Uh, Windows. I, I don't know how well it's running on Windows 10 since it's from like Windows 98 era. Uh, so I haven't been able to boot that up just yet and try it out. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, it, it's been really cool to see, you know, what that influence is. And, and, uh, and geez, how many people were... There's not a game about him, just... I know. Not no, yet. he's in it. He's in it, and, he's it, in and it. he did the soundtrack. It could easily it. be. Mm-hmm. Um, um, uh, uh, James, do you have any, any thoughts on, on Bowie and, and the video game connection there? Well, uh, for me, I always think of the NES Labyrinth. Have you guys seen that? No. What? So, uh, 1986... Oh, uh, it was the first, no. I know this because it was the first uh, video game Nintendo produced based on a movie. <gasps> Tell me so more. It was, it was released exclusively in Japan. <laughs> oh, so there is, there is an English burr, burr. translation that's avail- available for download. And, oh. uh, you know, I can happily put one on a cartridge for you, Marta, since you seem interested. Uh, yes, I'm <laughs> yeah, very interested. Here's a, here's a YouTube <gasps> video. Oh Look at the flying owl <laughs> no. across the screen oh, in beautiful no. 8-bit. That's amazing. That's awesome. Wait, I, can I see more? I, well, there should be more. I, I, let's see. Let's pop up here. I really I, want to know how they do his hair in 8-bit. Is oh, this, okay. Wow. Wait, it's wait. very Gauntlet-esque. It looks like Gauntlet. <laughs> Did they? It really, it's like the same pattern as Gauntlet. Hold on. Oh, my God, though. So wait, is that Sarah? Who is that? I think so. That looks like Hoggle. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty tremendous. Is, oh wow! But yeah, it looks like it looks very very gauntlet. It seems. Um, so. Oh. Well, there okay. You go. Does she actually get to meet him one day? How exciting! I had no idea. I had no idea. No, I never heard of this. How fun! Now I'm gonna have to find that. <laughs> oh, there we go. I see you found the level key. Uh, it definitely doesn't feel as Muppety um, mm, no. in this. So <laughs> uh, so that's unfortunate. But hey, it's good, cool that they have that. That is pretty cool. And that's I love great. Gauntlet, so that's like two of my favorite things in mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I got to find that. That's great. Bowie shot the food. Um <laughs> <laughs> that's great uh so okay let's keep the video game and going with our, our this is the weirdest show um so minecraft and no isn't that other story but i'll get to that for you john um minecraft finds a way to program basic code in game so uh basically 
they they're they're you can write it in game now. I mean, we've seen versions where where there's been giant Game Boys that you could like actually play games on, and and other things kind of emulated within it. And yeah, you can completely go in and and write uh, basic code. Apparently, um, apparently only about twenty commands at a time because something about the uh, clock, the the uh, refresh rate or clock speed of how That's twenty yes yeah, twenty commands per second yeah uh, oh per second per second and uh, yeah uh, twenty hertz operation clock is is kind of how uh, you know what Minecraft kind of works at, and uh, there you go, complete uh, programming in Minecraft. This is like the the modern. It, it continues to be the modern digital Legos for you know. This is like your, your Mindstorm kind of. Whoa! But uh, code I, makes I my only brain play explode. it on the PS3, so I don't think I can code in it. Yeah, I, that's also, the other thing. I like, don't think I would want to code in it, so I'm okay with that. You have to be a pretty pretty big code head to want to do this. Mm. So. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's pretty interesting. And of course, basic. I mean, basic is well, it's, it's basic coding. It's it's actually the early thing that Microsoft put out, right? I so I never learned I it. Suck at coding. No, I think you're right though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like the like the one of the first things. Um, so that the that got like PCs going. I think was basic. Yeah, you can make a turtle. I actually, I guess I did. Probably in like computer class. Right? Computer? Yeah. I never yeah. had that. They I were talking. They were it. doing Pascal by the time I got to computer mm. class. Mm. And just did not seem interesting to me at the time, so mm-hmm. didn't really dive into it a little more. Um, you got any thoughts over there, James? Uh, I mean, Minecraft in general uh, is something that's been really interesting me to watch. Uh, Smart AI. I-, I was with someone today from uh, uh, Berkshire Ventures that we're seeing in the next six years. <laughs> he thinks most lower-level development will re- be replaced by Smart AI that develops its own code. Oh, I mean, to my perspective, oh. I do a, a little bit of development, and I'm always impressed working with Angular. It kind of just does what it needs to do. <laughs> TypeScript mm-hmm. is great. That's great. And to keep with our other uh, divergent themes uh, and Minecraft today, uh, that I, I promised I'd put this back into the, the, the rundown. Um, so apparently Minecraft is one of Pornhub's fastest-growing search terms. What? <laughs> right. Why? Um, That's sad, man. Imagine not RedTube porn Pornhub Pornhub porn. like, exclusively Pornhub. I don't I don't know the numbers for RedTube. They haven't disclosed. Yeah. I mean, you could always go try. I'll leave that for homework for everybody. Kids, <laughs> no. Kids, no. <laughs> um. So so in the article was talking about like this doesn't necessarily mean there's a lot of po- Minecraft porn, but hey, there's, there is kind of a, a lot demand. of there's a demand <laughs> for it, and there are some people apparently getting inventive for it. Uh, and they're all also, you know, because anybody else that just wants to work a search engine, they'll just put Minecraft in the title. And you're like, well, this doesn't look wow. like Minecraft. Um, but it's just kind of an interesting thing to see what people are searching for. Terms like Minecraft porn, Minecraft sex, Minecraft hard drilling uh, were, were some of the <laughs> phrases that they were using. People are really into it. So, it seems kind of boring. That, <laughs> you know, it's not that I don't believe Pornhub. Uh, I do think they have like the craziest and coolest marketing platforms. I don't know if you guys saw after Fallout was released, they showed the chart of uh, decrease in porn activity for every day after Fallout was released. <laughs> oh, the that's funny. <laughs> that's great. They even included like some pretty um, in-depth infographics like Age of Minecraft searchers on Pornhub. <laughs> 80%, 18 Did to 24. Did Pornhub put this out? That, is this a marketing? Apparently. That, that looks weirdly like a Pixar flyer. <laughs> it kind of yeah. does. Gender of Minecraft searchers. Hey, 15% women. Or a Go Tampax figure. commercial. Here's uh, the thing, though. Imagine if all porn, if most porn was Minecraft porn, how excited we'd be to see actual porn. That's true. It, it's really... But luckily... I think we can all agree... Real porn is far superior to Minecraft uh, porn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so how how much porn have you seen that you've now moved on to Minecraft? I mean, and this isn't the first, like, I mean, the, the classic Tomb Raider nude patch on, like, the original pixely polygonal yeah. Tomb Raider. I'm, I'm thinking, like, Leisure Suit Larry days. Leisure Suit Larry, wow. There you yeah. go, yeah. there's that. That, so, was, that was a whole nother awakening. Of, there's an Atari But when game. I was playing Leisure yeah. Suit Larry, it was because I didn't have porn. That sucks to be you. Well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. If you could get this video game. <laughs> <laughs> but no. I liked Leisure yeah, Suit so Larry. Now I'm like, I don't fun. play Leisure Suit Larry that much anymore because I just do a regular search on Pornhub. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Now, now, th- now there's the internet. And there's in not general. enough time. Yeah, there's that too. <laughs> 
<laughs> Leisure Suit Larry was really in depth. It was so I mean, in depth. Yeah, I mean, I only played it, and at it just... was scattered. You know, that stuff like that was just trickled in boobs. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it yeah. was a game. I, I played. I played some of the later ones that were a little like more kind of PlayStation era ish. Oh, I never th- played those. They added some 3D in there, and they were a little more in your face about things. I thought. Mm. So, but I never played like the 2D. I did. Leisure loot. You did. That, yeah, that was the one that, that I got. Was that into. your jam back in the day? Like, totally yeah, the my jam. I had, an old, I had an older brother who went like I was. I was like the youngest kid. <laughs> That's all I used to do. Was just like sneak into the room, and be like the web kid. TV and Leisure Suit Larry. That was, like my, that was like my Saturday night. Awesome. I know. That's wow. a lot of Saturday nights. Hey, the, the kid who lived next to my grandma had it, so I would go over to his house, and every once in a while we get to I see. Leisure Suit Larry. I thought this kid was so lucky to have Leisure Suit Larry. Honestly, uh, parents didn't know what it was. Oh yeah, they no, thought no, no, it no. was totally a game. It's like an Easter egg present. For, yeah, <laughs> right for kids. Well, you think back then we didn't have a rating system. Yeah, so it was like, oh, games are for kids here. And it's yeah, like, my parents always checked. Man, I wanted Police Quest, but that was too gritty. Do you wow. remember Police Quest? Ooh. No, Mm-mm. it was like Pull space, you know, Space Quest and um, King's Quest. I think it was Sierra. Mm-hmm. I think all those were. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sierra games are that, that very popular. A lot of those 2D games or or stuff like uh was a Phantasmagoria, one of the FMV full motion video ones, and it was like, you know, had like like the oh you know, as a teenager, oh, almost nudity or you know, mm-hmm. and, yeah. and, and be bloody or something like that. You didn't get to see that. That's what have you looked at Night Trap? No. And that was the game that they were talking about in Congress? What? What? Night Trap? No. For I the Sega C D. I don't know what Night Trap is. Uh it <laughs> Uh, James, do you want to explain Night Trap? I think you're the resident game expert oh, you're here. Pushing huh? that off on James. I, I'm a big fan of uh, FMV games in general. There you so go. <laughs> if we had an episode on that, I have two friends that would love to have an opportunity to talk to anybody else ever who ever liked those. But uh, so Night, Night Trap was ported to Sega CD and uh, Sega CD 32X. It's an interactive FMV game. Have you guys ever played any of those? I don't think so. I did back the in the day. No. So the FMV bunch. is pretty simple. Uh, you're watching a movie and it pauses and you have to make a decision. Oh, that, yeah. Think of it as a... It's like Dungeons you know, and Dragons. Adventure, but it's, it's video. I okay. love it. Yeah. Yes, so I have. It was a big jump off. Uh, and it was originally released for, I think, like MS-DOS and uh, ported all the strange video consoles nobody bought, like 3DO, except for me. Mm-hmm. And, you know... All the FMV games have the same structure. You, you make your decision. You watch the next part of the video. If you do it wrong, you just go back to your previous save point. But what made, oh, yeah. I think, Night Trap kind of stand out, uh, first of all, it was a pack-in. You know, so everybody had it. Most people are familiar with a game called Sewer Shark. It came with every copy of Sega CD. This scene's not going well. <laughs> I just, uh, wait, wait, just so you know, we're pulling you're up one of the dudes. We're pulling up the infamous bathroom death scene on what YouTube right now. What is this? What is that machine? Wow, that's not. That's something. that looks like the thing from our first segment. It, I don't think that's where you put it. There's, there's an app for that. <laughs> um, but where are they going? Yeah, and, and, and since and she's and she's gone, and, and that's it. And scene. That was it. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, this is fun. This looks familiar. Yeah, it looks like um, a bad battleship movie. Well, here's the thing: <laughs> none of the acting was ever any good. Like, that's e- what made it so great. Ever, <laughs> ever. There was even like, well, Wing Commander was one of these too, right? Because they had like Mark Hamill as a part of it. Um, I mean, it was more like a space combat game, but they, the big deal was they had full motion video sequences. So everybody had CD-ROMs, and we could put video on these things because mm-hmm. yes. there was so much space on those CD-ROMs, and we can completely do all these video things. Like I remember my, you know, uh, getting a computer in 1996, or no, not even that, the one in '93, and there's just like a CD-ROM of like the the San Diego Zoo. <laughs> And I just loved it because I got to see all the animals. <laughs> like, lost your mind. Yeah, it's like that uh, the old Encyclopedia Britannica on yeah. CD. Oh, oh yeah. There's so much information. I had those. And my school had the CDI, and then it got like Compton's Encyclopedia, and that and it had video in it and everything. And that and stuff was expensive. It was. Remember, it was like always at the end of a movie or something. They're like, and stay tuned towards the end of the movie for <laughs> Encyclopedia <laughs> Britannica on. Yeah, maybe it was just me. I was just, I remember it being at the this? end. Of, I remember it being at the end of movies. That and like magazine subscriptions a lot. Sticker books. Sorry. Huh. I had a long night. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
but uh but sticker yeah bo- Wait, what are sticker yeah. like where you collect <laughs> stickers yeah the sticker books you used to like subscribe and they would send you stickers every month hmm. and then there was ads for other, other I remember educational things only baseball oh, well I baseball stickers were like baseball cards but you stuck them into a book and then you tried to complete the whole book you never had a sticker sticker see book? i had that no. i had something like that like no, he-man no, transformer stuff where right? you just you put the stickers on like it was There's basically like, like a photo album. You're missing out yeah. on a whole era of scratch and sniff, my friend. I don't know. A little bit of grape soda. It sounds like a girl thing. Show, show title. That was a guy thing, too. Well, no? Can I we had, take a poll I on had, this I online? Had, I had sticker books. Who had a sticker book? <laughs> I still have my sticker book. There's a, there's some, I don't know if I still... I don't think I still have one. I don't I think they mine. lasted. Um, sticker books? How, how are you doing, James? You got a sticker book over there? <laughs> I mean, I have some Nintendo sticker books. There you go. <laughs> there right, there you counts. go. He's in. He's in. Yep. And so, yeah, it was like Transformers and, and, and stuff oh, like yeah. that. And yeah, they're, they're, that was a thing. I love sticker books. <laughs> I have all my book it stickers. Book it. Oh, man. Well, on that point, okay, so we, <laughs> we, we have to get uh, get you out of here because uh, there's, there's a few other stories. But let's let's be honest. We talked about the most interesting ones. Um, yeah. Drivers as car. Dri- we'll talk about drivers as cars a, 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 another another time for sure. Um, hey, want to give a shout out our, our friend Dutters here on the show. Uh, she is now uh, very involved with the Scarehouse podcast, and uh, that's now on Stitcher, iTunes, and Spreaker. Uh, so go check it out. Uh, the first episode with her at the helm is up there, and then she's going to do some exciting things with that. Uh, if you don't know, the Scarehouse is uh, one of the coolest uh, haunted houses here in town. Uh, so they, they, they have a lot of fun on there. They talk to like a lot of the people that develop like the costumes and the and the and others, you know, parts of the, the haunted houses and, and and you know the builders and 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 other things around haunted houses and horror. Um, so uh, go check that out. Just look for the Scarehouse podcast on uh, uh, iTunes, Speaker, Stitcher, and give them a shout. Uh, please check out our awesome chat. We talked to Kim Lyons of NextPittsburgh.com. Uh, we talked about Pittsburgh startups, restaurants, and Bill Petudo. So find out what we had to say about him. Over there at uh, awesomecast.net. Uh, Pittsburgh Retro Gaming.com, January 23rd. What are your last words on it there, James? If you haven't gotten a tick yet, it's not too late. They're $20 at the door, 15 online. Kids under 10 get in free. You don't have to be a fan of retro gaming when you go in, but you'll leave one. I like that. I like that. That's a good tagline there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and anything, Marta, what, what do you have to plug out there? Uh, I'm plugging. I have a contest going on right now. It's going through Sunday. It's for uh, Spoonwood Brewing for my last episode, episode 47 on Marta on the Move, www.martaonthemove.com. It is for a free t-shirt and a free growler with a one Philip from Spoonwood Brewing, um, also with Craft Beer Network. So those guys were generous enough to give us that. And all the details are on my website. Awesome. And John Carmen, what do you got going on? I'm just going to plug the Pulse uh, Guybrader again. <laughs> uh, it says here that it that uses... Way, way to bring that full money. circle. Yeah, <laughs> oscillations. It uses oscillations to stimulate the man. So, Not the woman. Can, can, <laughs> can, your, can your viewers buy us stuff? Buy us stuff? Yeah. I, 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 I would totally... Buy us a Pulse. Can you... Well, buy... Each of us a pulse. Yeah, is, is the pulse four? Not just one. Each of us. Yeah. Well, there's the pulse. Yeah, you get one per well, person. I mean, no, there's the pulse duo. She can use that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll take that. So we can each get appropriate pulse. Uh, yeah. James, I'll put your into the mail if, they, if it comes me. through as well. Uh, I mean, mine would have to hook up to an Oculus, or I wouldn't be interested. Well, there you go. Oh, there that's you go. Well, there's level. There. <laughs> so, wow. That's something else. That is a entirely. whole another level. You need to raise. You got to climb the ladder if you want to do business here. I mean, (laughs) wow! Uh, Thank you so much. And hey, (laughs) shout out to our friend Alex, who's watching this in California as we speak from a Christian camp. What? Yep. Yep. I'm sorry. Why did you say it like that? I'm so sorry. I I think he's apologizing. (laughs) He's got apologize. He's got his headphones on. So Alex, no, he's having fun. It's is just he? he's at a Christian camp listening to this one. Hiding in a and he closet? doesn't so he's not looking up all the Pornhub things we're talking about for fear <laughs> of 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 scanning uh, and that. Actually he's kinda I think he's helping with the tech out there, so so maybe he's right. the guy that, that, that works that out, but I don't know. All right, uh, I, all right, send him the pulse, I guess. <laughs> no, no, no. I want one. Send him his. He could have mine. Hi, <laughs> Alex. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, this is great. Way to entertain you. Guys, this is one of the most fun episodes I've ever had of the awesome cast. Thank you so much for joining us. Smartonthemove.com. 
Carmen Avenue, Pittsburgh, uh, RetroGaming.com. Uh, follow everything at AwesomeCast.net. Uh, subscribe to the show. Share the show. Support the show if you'd like over on the Patreon and get some fabulous gifts and, and highs and thank yous from us. And, uh, and, and uh, the, geez, that's it. Thank you to our awesome chat room. Uh, Wheels, Juggler, John, Alex in California at the Christian Camp. Missy's in there hanging out as well. Hill Garza's here early uh, down in Texas saying hi. And uh, everybody else, thank you so much. And uh, uh, thank you to our awesome audience. You've been, thank you for your awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.